Hey everybody, it's me, Show360, and it's another boys love chat. So this time I'm going to talk to you about um, the show A Tale of a Thousand Stars. So this is a show that hasn't aired yet, so I'm not going to be talking about specifics on plot or acting or anything like that because the show isn't on the air yet. Um, but I am going to talk about what's been going on with the hashtag on Twitter and people being upset because of a change made to the storyline in order to get the show on air. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the story, the story has to do with a soldier who um, has a love story with a man. And long story short, man, because there's some spoiler plotty stuff I just don't want to get out here, but basically it's a gay love story with a soldier and a man. And the reason why this has been a trending topic recently is because they found out that the soldier character will not be portrayed as a soldier when it makes it to air. And a lot of people are like, that's bullshit. The whole reason why we were excited about this show is because it has a neat looking plot, but also because it deals with a soldier and people don't talk enough about LGBT members of military and armed services. And for the people who have been defending the move, they have said that, you know, unless you are from Thailand, you don't understand the politics regarding LGBT people and like how people are really treated on the ground. But also you don't understand that this show would not have been aired at all if we were to continue with the soldier being gay narrative because there is so much going on with politics and because this could be something that could cause a lot of problems for the actors, the production company, the television company that decides to air it, all of this stuff. Um, and a lot of people are saying, you know, it's not right that you want our attention, you want our views, you want our participation, you want our money, but you don't want to tell our stories unless it benefits you in some way. And to that I have to say, that's the game. And that's not just the game for gay, lesbian, queer, trans, plus, ace, all that. That's the game across the board. When it comes to African American people, the only reason why they started selling black music on vinyl and then on 8-track and cassette and CD is because it made money. Initially records that black people were on were called race records because they were considered a niche something that people didn't really want now it's mainstream but they only started to sell it in bulk and we only became mainstream because people saw a profit center in it but for years they held down black artists if a black artist made a song it would be re-recorded by a white artist and that re-recording of the song would see more success people were cheated out of royalties they were put into shit record contracts people weren't allowed to own their own labels all the labels were owned by white people for the most part unless they were independent labels radio play was really hard to get if you didn't want to slip somebody some money on the side Whenever you're the underclass, whenever you are the minority, a lot of times popular exposure comes with strings attached. Now, I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying it is the name of the game. And with that being said, do I understand why this production decided to change from a soldier to maybe like an aid worker or something like that? Absolutely, I understand. And I understand because they're saying, we like this story. We want to present something for the boys love fandom community who love this story but we also want the budget we want to tell the story as beautifully as we can and you know he's a soldier we don't have to tell you he's a so we know he's a soldier and that's how they're doing it and what I find to be kind of hypocritical about the kind of fervor that people have regarding a tale of a thousand stars is that so many people are so pissed off about the fact that they changed him from a soldier to like an aid worker but have nan words to say about China's absolute ban on gay media even though they watch the untamed like it was a religious experience. They have no problem with the adjustments that are made to shows in order for them to air in the market in China. But when they change one aspect of what is still a gay story, people are like, oh, this is some bullshit. Y'all need to quit being fucking cowards. Y'all are just using us for money. What the fuck do you think that Advance Bravely was doing? What do you think that The Untamed is doing? They're using you too. They're using you too. They figure you've read the book. You know what's supposed to be here. We're gonna give you as many context clues as possible so like, you know what it is. Even if we can't say what it is, you know what it is. 
because you understand the environment we're trying to operate in, it's either this or you're not getting it. So why is it so different in Thailand? Is it because you've been fed this myth that being gay in Thailand is just no thing and people don't care and everyone does it and whatever? Because I'll be honest with you, a lot of the boys love that we watch is pretty drama free on the homophobia rankings. Like, there's a little bit of like, oh, I don't know if my parents will understand. But you don't see a lot of gay bashing when it comes to these boys love shows in Thailand. It's pretty calm. It's pretty low key. People tend to be generally supportive when it comes to the characters. And because of that, I think people have this false equivalency that because they don't watch other media from Thailand, they don't watch the news from Thailand, they don't read about Thailand for what it really is. They fetishized it for like this sex travel haven. They don't realize that, no, it's not what widely accepted. It's not the thing that everyone's just like, oh, yeah, everyone's gay, whatever. Nobody cares. It's not like that. It's not like that. Thailand, much like Korea, much like America, much like France, much like South Africa, every country has its positives and its negatives. And every country tries to put their best foot forward for the most part, because if they show all of their ugliness, all of their savagery, all of their things that would make you think twice about investing, visiting, spending money, then it would be a harm to the overall goal that the government has for that country. So of course, they're not gonna show you the ugly, they're not gonna show you the bad. They want you coming here. They want you spending money here. <laughs> But the fact of the matter is every country has these untold nasties that we don't put out there or that they're not spoken of very much. And so if you're from that country, you get it. You know about it. It's not a secret. But as somebody who's only popping in to watch Two Boys Kiss and maybe catch a little bit of the auxiliary environment and plot, you don't really know what's going on in Thailand. Like, I've always wondered why nobody talks more about classism when it comes to Thai BL. No one ever talks about, in general, most of the characters and people on a Thai boys love show are really rich. And if they're not really rich, they're firmly middle class. Firmly middle class. Because I've watched travel documentaries about Thailand and not everybody has a house with tons of rooms and stairs and big gardens and everything else. A lot of people live in homes that are not that at all. There's people who live in homes that look like shacks and they're considered okay. Like they're not considered well to do by any stretch, but they're considered okay. So like there's a lot about Thailand that people don't really know and so they assume because they've watched so much media that like, why wouldn't we just go ahead and do whatever? Get real, sis. Get real. And it's also a safety issue. Let me put that out there as well. Not only is it about can we get this on the air, but do you want the best actors to do these roles? They're making one change. They're not, they're not making it to where the character's no longer in a same-sex relationship. They're making one change in his occupation. And that changes not only so that they can get the show made and put on air, but so they can get an actor who's willing to put their neck out there and do this. Because it could be a thing where the actor could receive harassment, their family could receive harassment if they're out here playing a gay soldier. A gay aid worker, maybe not, but a gay soldier, yeah, it could be a problem. But people don't think like that because they're selfish and they have this feeling like, you know, somebody's just got to take one for the team. Why can't it be this? It's no big deal. It's not a real impact to anybody. What's a real impact is that you're taking our money and not representing us. Okay, sis. Okay, sis. Well, if y'all are really interested about real rep representation, if you're worried about your real stories being told, if you really want to see the nitty gritty and everything else, why aren't more people in the boys love community talking about gay okay Bangkok? How come there's not huge fandoms over Diary of Tootsies? How come people don't want to talk about some of the stuff that's not so nice? How come the effect was not in people's end of the year list a lot of the time? Because you don't want reality. You want fantasy. And you want fantasy activism as well. If you want real activism, do something about it. Donate to charities that aid LGBT youth in Thailand. But you don't want that. 
Do you want to see your story told on screen the way you read it? That's what you really care about. And what I have to say is this. I'm, I'm really lucky, me, I'm really lucky that I live in a time period where my story is told multiple times in media, where my specific story, like me, my skin color, my heritage, my voice, my familial situation, all of the things that are my story are told in great detail in many ways through media. There are tons of movies and stories and television shows about middle-aged black women, divorcees, single moms, you know, working in professional environments and trying to maintain some kind of a life. Like, that's out there. I see myself reflected. But if we were talking 30 years ago, I wouldn't have seen myself reflected. If you're talking 20 years ago, I probably wouldn't have seen myself reflected as accurately. If we're talking 50 years ago, not at all. It took time to get to a point where I could look at media and see myself clearly. And even then, there's still some things I don't see. I don't see a lot of middle-aged black women into K-pop reflected in the media. But it took time. It took time and it took people taking the L so that somebody else could take the win. There are a lot of unspoken heroes in black media. A lot of people who played the maid, played the servant, played the buffoon in order for them to be able to be cast in white movies to make it to where people got used to seeing a black face in a white movie so then they could see a character who wasn't a buffoon in a white movie and not feel challenged, not feel unsafe, not feel like he doesn't belong there at all or she belong there at all. It's a process. It takes time. I want it to happen. I want it to happen just as much as you. But if we're going to talk about like what sword we're going to fall on in terms of representation, a change from a soldier to a care worker or an aid worker, I think I can live with that. And I think unless you live in Thailand and you know what the actual political climate is like there, maybe you should reconsider what kind of activism you want to campaign for on these apps. Not saying, just saying. But that's my opinion and you're free to leave yours in the comment section also if you look in the description box you will see a link to me and mason's podcast vlog vlog not podcast our vlog about boys love we have two episodes up so far we have one where we talk about to sorrow one where we talk about why are you i will put both the links down below in the description box and i thank you for watching bye